All right, guys. Hi, we're back after a little uh, vacation, so to speak. A yeah. vacation called the <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic, dealing with the pandemic, and someone had a concussion, but we won't mention any names, and then just dealing with life in general. But we're back. And we're going to talk about dragons. Dragons. We've got dragons in Charleston, or we did at least. The evidence points to that. And since we deal in evidence. We deal with evidence. We're going to talk about that. And give you evidence, dragon evidence. Today. Dragon evidence. So, what is it? What are dragon evidence? <laughs> well, evidences? today we're going to talk about, and it's not as nasty as it sounds, but we're going to talk about tongue stones. Yeah, tongue stones are the evidence that dragons once So, once literally existed. like their tongues? Well, that's what they believed anyway. <laughs> So we start, we're going to go way back to ancient Rome, um, to Pliny the Elder, Pliny? Pliny, Pliny, Pliny the, the Elder. Elder. His yeah. actual name is Gaius Plinius Cecilius Secundus. Dominus Sanctus, Nominus Patre. I thought we were going into an exorcism there for a moment. Oh, well, we're talking uh, about serpent's tongue, so we might need maybe. to keep that on. I don't know. Well, um, neither of us burst in the flame, so obviously it didn't work. Father, I'm the Holy Spirit. <laughs> But anyway, now. So Pliny was actually uh, considered to be a great historian. Yeah. However, he was also known that um, that he had an answer for everything. Yeah. So, it's, uh, what he wrote, uh, nat he wrote what, natural history, and it was an encyclopedia. One book. He wrote one book. One book of everything, the history of absolutely everything, but it was one book with 37 volumes. 37 <laughs> volumes, yeah. So, and he was one of those individuals, if you didn't know the facts, just make shit up. And uh, I like love him do. for that. Like, like we, we did, yeah. Like we do all the time, <laughs> like I do. Yeah, yeah, you don't know it, just make it up. So, he was up in the mountainous region of Italy and he started finding these, these like, things geez, that he called things, tongue stones. And he called tongue stones. Stone. And um, he, there's nowhere, no way for these things to have gotten there except from out of the sky. They had yeah, to that's his out opinion the anyway. So yes. he thought they were little meteorites. Or yeah. dragons flying up around yeah. who just happen to like get old and have their teeth start dropping out, I guess. I guess and so. their tongues dropping out while they're in flight over Italy. Mm -hmm. Right? Sounds plausible to me. Yeah. All right. So these were used as amulets. They were. They were used to protect people from many, many different things. But mainly poison. Yes. Um, which would make sense if it's a dragon, a serpent, and you get bitten by a snake, mm -hmm. then the dragon's tooth would help pull the poison. Right. They would actually dip your... it into the wound and it would right. absorb the poison. It would absorb the poison. Which then was also used uh, to protect kings and noblemen from being poisoned in their wine. Really? Uh-huh. What are you doing? <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. You don't nothing. trust me? You don't trust the water I just gave you? No. Yeah, actually, you filled this up for me, so I figured, you know, it would best be safe than sorry, right? Does that uh, lawyer on there have... Do really, you think, like, actually, if you have an accident here at the ghost desk, workers' comp covers that? I don't know. I'd have to ask my attorney about workers' comp if I swallowed a tongue stone, if that would be covered. And in fact... In your case, he may be the attorney's attorney, Peter David Brown, and uh, he may actually have to take care of you in case you did get a little wild with the poisoning. So, <laughs> criminal defense. And still in Italy. Yeah. Well, yeah, still yeah, in Italy in 1666. Okay. So, uh, Nicholas Steno. Nicholas Steno, 1666. Now, he was into natural history and studying um, creatures and animals and things of that nature, and some fishermen caught a strange creature, 
and it ended up being a great white shark, and they brought it to him for examination, and Nicholas Steno discovered that the uh -huh. teeth of the shark or the teeth matched, of yeah, matched, matched the these wonderful tongue stones. So, tongue stones are actually fossilized shark's teeth, and Nicholas Steno became the father of paleontology, and these actually have their own technical term, those worship and using those as amulets is called gloss glossopetre, if I'm not yeah. incorrect. But people really did still um, make amulets out of them. They did. They, they would dip the, the backs of roots into silver and they'd wear them as necklaces. Or yeah, they would so actually that continued. Yeah, and they it continues today. People continues still today. wear shark's tooth as amulets. Um, they, back then, they would actually sew them into their clothing, clothing so they'd have... Oh, a snake bite kit, so to speak. Yeah, you get bit by a snake, you just rip this out of the lining of your clothing, dip it in the wound, and You're still good to go. You die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, because well, I say that out loud. My filter is gone. I'm sorry, I've been away from the camera too long. <laughs> the crazy thing is, though, remember back, Plenty the Elder found this way up in the mountains. Yeah. So back then, though, he Roman. would not have known that those mountains ages and ages and ages ago were, we're underwater. underwater.